हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सचिन मिश्राम ही वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट वट इज नोन एज ऑनली सेटिस्फाइंग लू दिस काइंड ऑफ लू हैज गेन्ड अ फेयर अमाउंट ऑफ पॉपुलरिटी ओवर द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स एंड इट इज विदाउट एनी डाउट वन ऑफ द फॉर्मेट दैट वर्क बेस्ट ऑन सोशल मीडिया वी आर सो यूज टू स्क्रोलिंग विदाउट केयरिंग टू मच विथ वॉट वी आर वॉचिंग दैट फॉर सम स्टेम रीजन this look catch our attention this obviously translate to a lot of views meaning a lot of visibility for our work this kind of look works very well in 3d but with the right adjustments a 2d look can also become very interesting the trick i used to get this type of look is to have a main element in which i try to create a very organic look Now before you get started today I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel like and share Let's move on to After Effects We can start as usual by creating our composition For this animation we are making sure the frame rate is 15 frames per second Now let's build the elements that make up the jellyfish We start from the head for which we are going to use the CC spare effect we create a new comb which we will call head and inside it we can create a new solid we use the fill effect to change its color we move it up at about two thirds of the composition now we duplicate the solid we just created and change its color so it's slightly darker afterwards we move its anchor point and change the scale in order to create a thin rectangle on the lower part of the head Let's make sure to connect this rectangle to the other solid. Now back to the main composition. Let's drag the composition head and apply the CC sphere effect. We can increase the radius parameter and move it up. Finally, we change the shading parameters to remove the shadows as usual we bring ambient to 100 and diffuse and specular to 0 let's add eyes to our jellyfish since we decided to give the head this 3d look it's important that the eyes have the same characteristic also here we are going to use the cc sphere effect to give depth to this element we can create the eyes and pupils using shape layers create an ellipse for eye change its color open the path of the ellipse and convert it to bezier now using pen tool modify the eye shape We duplicate the ellipse and use it as a pupil. Call this layer left eye. Duplicate it and move it to the right side. rename it to right eye link the right eye to left eye add both eye layers to a composition and name it eyes now we go back to the main composition duplicate the head keeping all 
pressed and drag all the rig to the composition eyes. Now we create a null which we will use to control the movement of these two elements. We can position it in a correspondence with the top part of the head and connect to it the two pre-composition we just created. As the last step, we are going to create the tentacles. In this case, we are going to use shape layers. We create a new composition which we will call tentacle1 within which we use the paint tool to draw a line. We change the thickness. Now we go inside the parameters that control the stroke and make sure to set the parameter line cap on round. Change the color as you need. And after we can work on the parameters of the option taper, which was just added in the 2020 version of After Effects. So make sure to have the last version of the software. We change it until we reach a shape that is similar to the original tentacles. Our goal is to have a tentacle which is more narrow on the top and thicker at the bottom. Once we finished, we select the layer we just created, duplicate it and change its color to dark gray. Now we select the rectangle tool to mask this new layer and create a sort of shadow on the top part of the tentacle. When the rectangle tool is selected to work on shape layers, it has two different functions. The first one is to create a new shape which we are not interested in for now. If however we click on this icon, we can use it to create a mask and here we have our tentacle complete. Now we select the composition we just created and duplicate it. We can work on the part to make the new tentacle shorter. Let's also adjust the width and the parameter of the option taper if that's necessary. We can go back to the mean comp, drag the composition tentacle 1 and position it. Let's duplicate it so we can have two copies. For the moment, let's have them at the center of the screen. Further on the animation process, we are going to add the B bob effect, which will give the tentacles a look we are looking for. We can repeat the process also with the smaller tentacles. But in this case, we can position them on the sides of the jellyfish head. As the last step, we create a second nut. Position it just below the first one and connect the tentacles to it. Okay then, now that our rig is finished, let's talk for a bit and see how we can manage animations that must look. It's fundamental to remember that in order for a loop to be perfect, the range between the keyframes we are going to add to the different elements must always be equal or at least multiples or dividers of the unit we you choose. In this case, we are going to stop the movement of the body, which is the main movement of this animation with a range of 8 frames between the top and the bottom position. This means that also the other layers we will use ranges of 8 frames or its multiples or dividers meaning 4, 16, 32 and so on. Before we begin, let's define the area of our loop. We position our cursor at about 2 seconds from the beginning of the composition and click B to set up the start of our work area. This will leave us with a bit of workspace 
to begin the loop of the single elements before the work area if we choose to. Now we move our 32 frames to set up instead the end of our work area. Now that we have our work area set up, let's pass on to the animation. The first element which we are going to animate is the null that controls the body. We press P to reveal the position parameter. Separate the dimensions and add the first keyframe on the Y axis in correspondence to the beginning of our loop. And the second one, 8 frames later where we are going to slightly lower it. Now we had a ping pong expression which will loop the movement I set up with a continuous ping pong between both keyframes. Now let's refine the speed graph. I want to set up it in a way that the body bounces in the moment it reaches its lower position. However, I don't want the bounce to be too sharp. So I'm going to add the easy ease on both keyframes and bring the influence to 100%. Just on the first one, leaving the second keyframe as it is. Now let's work on the head. We are going to create squash and stretch using scale and give it some depth using the rotation of the CC sphere effect. As for the squash and stretch, we want the head of the jellyfish to gradually widen as it reaches its lower position. Mimicking the movement we actually have in nature when the head of a jellyfish fills up with water. After we want the head to stretch right after its lower position, creating some sort of inertia movement between the null and the head. To do it, we click on the change shape icon on the scale parameter to control the axis independently and compress it when it reach its lower position. We move back 16 frames and copy with the same keyframe. Now, we move ahead a couple of frames and stretch the head of the jellyfish. Let's apply some easy ease on our keyframes and apply cycle looping expression as well. Unlike the ping pong expression where we have a back and forth between the values of both keyframes as we did on null, this expression creates a perfect loop. Once arrived at the end of the keyframes, they are repeated from the very beginning. This way I created the movement I was looking for. The head widens at its lowest and then it suddenly stretches after the bounce. To further emphasize this movement, we can work on the position of the solid we pre-composed and applied the CC sphere effect on. We position ourselves in correspondence to the first keyframe we added. We click twice on our composition and this way our cursor will be positioned at the exact same point. We can make sure looking at the frame number. Then we can add a keyframe. We can do the same on the third keyframe. To conclude it, set the second keyframe. Where we lower our solids, we can add easy ease and the cycle looping expression. And that we just further emphasize the movement of the head. We basically have to repeat the same process only working on the rotation parameter on the x-axis of the CC square effect. 
This will allow the animation to gain more depth. You can tilt the head up as it's compressing and down when it stretches. Also here we add his ease and the cycle looping expression. and create an overlap of just one frame. Between the movements we set up on scale and these last keyframes. We can still refine this last element in such a way to create more contrast between the outside and the inside of the head. To do so, we select the layer and set up the render parameter on outside. This will make visible only the outside part of the head and change the render parameter to inside on the copy we just created. This layer will be inside of our head. We can drag it to the bottom part of our composition over the tentacles and apply the fill effect in order to make it darker and have a greater contrast in the design. Now let's make the movement even more organic using the time displacement effect. As a second step, I am going to create a new composition, which I will call ramp. I create a new solid inside it. And apply the ramp effect, which will create a gradient on our layers. Time displacement uses the luminous value of each pixel and the displacement map, in this case our ramp layer, to distort the corresponding pixel of the layer in which the effect was applied, based on the maximum displacement amount we set up. Let me explain a better. If we choose our ramp composition as a time displacement layer, we create a delay of 1 second between the area where the mass is white and the area where the mask is black. It's a super useful effect to obtain more organic movements. In fact, it's enough to use a low displacement time to make the delay less perceptible and give the textual arc to our animation. The only downside of this effect is that in order to avoid this ugly aliasing effect that's created, we have to increase the time resolution and this requires a lot of power from the machine. Usually I keep the time resolution pretty low to work at around 60 frames and bring it up to the maximum value only for rendering. The possibilities that this effect offers are endless. It's enough to just change the details of our RAM or the parameters of the effect itself to get extremely interesting results. In this case, we are going to use it just to give a more organic touch to the movements we set up on the head. Let's drag the RAM composition we just created and disable it. Our head layer is already pre-composed. Unfortunately, time displacement won't work correctly on a layer where we already applied the CC square effect. So we have to pre-compose it to a second time. Let's position ourselves at the beginning of our loop. Click again, command or control plus shift plus C and make sure to select the option move all attributes into the new composition. This way the CC square effect will be moved into the pre-composition and we can finally work with the time displacement effect. Remember also to reconnect our new pre-composition to the null that controls the movement of the whole body. We can now apply the time displacement effect and select our layer RAM as a displacement map. Right now the displacement is coming from below but we want it to come from above. 
So let's bring the displacement time to minus 1. We can slightly lower it to make the effect a little less heavy. As I was saying before, for the moment, I am not going to increase the resolution. I will only do it once the animation will be finalized and ready to export. We can repeat the same procedure also for the inside of the head. Also remember to relink the new precons to the null again. Okay, the movement of the head is done. Let's move on to the tentacles. We can start from the main ones. Let's add the wave bar effect on the first tentacle. We can bring the direction to 180 degrees. The height to 100 and the width to 500. This will have to create a distortion that simulates the movement of the tentacles of a jellyfish. The tentacle is already moving because through the wave speed parameter. We can control the speed of the movement. The problem here is that this parameter is based on the seconds. One means that the effect will take one second to create a perfect loop. If we wanted to create a full loop every 2 seconds, we would have to type 1 by 2 and so on. Our loop however has a duration that is not based on seconds but on the number of frames. 32 frames on 15 frames per second are 2 seconds and 2 frames. An irregular duration which is not possible to animate using the wave speed parameter. We can however use the phase parameter. First, let's make sure to set the wave speed parameter at 0. So that's the tentacle is still. Afterwards, we add a first keyframe on the phase parameter at the beginning of our loop and the second one at the end. Also here, unfortunately, after effects isn't of much help. If you follow its logic to have a full loop, we should have just take the value of phase from 0 to 360 degrees. On this parameter, however, for reasons I haven't yet understood myself, despite numerous searches, we have a full loop at 256. In this case, minus 256. Because I want the baby movements to happen downwards and not upwards. Here we have it, a perfect loop all solved with tentacles. Let's add the cycle looping expression. Now we can copy the effect on the second tentacle but make sure to select the whole effect so that the values on the parameter in which we don't have keyframes are also copied. Now it just remains to create an offset of 16 frames between the both tentacles to make their movement perfectly symmetrical. We can also move the keyframes we just added until we get a result that's coherent with the movement of the head. Now on to the second tentacles. In this case, we are going to work on their position, making them move right and left in such a way that it looks like they are moving following the circular shape of head. So let's set the first keyframe on position, which we will copy also at the end of the loop. We can add a third keyframe then at halfway through the loop, where we move the tentacle from right to left. We can also add easy ease on everything. And there we have our loop. 
also here we are going to copy the full wave warp effect from the main right tentacle to the secondary right tentacle which is the one we are working on now we can create an offset of just one frame in order for the tentacles to move with a slight delay we'll move the keyframes we just created until we get the movement that's coherent with the rest of the body now let's repeat the same procedure on the second tentacle We can finish the movement of the tentacles by working on the null that controls them. Replicating on it, the movement already set up for the head. Also here, we are going to separate the dimensions and add two keyframes, eight frames apart from each other on the y-axis, moving the null down in correspondence to the second one. We are going to create a very subtle movement. Because we want this movement to have detail but not to be much present. We can also replicate the same speed graph and add the ping pong looping expression. To conclude, we are going to create an overlapping of just one frame between the two nulls. Now let's pass on to the eyes. As the first step, we can work on the X rotation of the CC sphere effect, creating overlapping. This way, we can add the further sense of depth to the head. We will take as a reference the movement of our null. Also here is valid the principle we saw for animating the sphere. On the null, we have ping pong looping expression so the loop ends here. On the rotation of the eyes, we are going to create a movement of this duration. We can add two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. Now we follow the usual logic to create an overlap. As the head goes down, the eyes rotate up and vice versa until they will return to their starting point. and make it loop using cycle looping expression. And here we obtain the loop also on the movement of the eyes. Now we are going to increase the level of detail by adding a blink to the eyes themselves. We want the eyes to close as they reach their lower position, meaning in correspondence to this keyframe. We position the cursor right over it and click twice on the composition eyes. Where we will find our shape on the same point. We can add a keyframe on the scale parameter so that we can close the eyes. And add two other keyframes, three frames before and three frames after it in order to have a full blink. Now that the main movement is essentially done. Let's make it more dynamic by creating some horizontal movements and rotation. We can begin with the head. So let's disable the tentacles and select the null which controls it. We add keyframes on the X axis. The first 8 frames before the beginning of our work area. And the second one. 8 frames after. On the first one, we will move the null left, and on the second one, we move it right. We can add easy ease and a ping pong looping expression. 
this way we get a sort of arc movement which makes our composition much more interesting now on to the rotation let's add a keyframe at the beginning of our loop and another one 16 frames after on the first one we rotate then the left and on the second one we rotate it right let's always use the same values also here we are at the ping pong looping expression and our movement is completed now let's try to reinforce the sense of dread on the head by taking advantage of the rotation of the eyes also on the y axis and z axis on the y axis we are basically going to replicate the movement we already set up on the head we move them left when the body moves left and we move them right when the body moves right you can also apply some easy ease and the ping pong looping expression afterwards we drag the key frames behind a couple of frames doing this makes it look like the eyes move first and then the body moves in consequence this simple trick reinforces the idea that it is a soft body let's repeat the same process on the z rotation this time we tell the eyes following the rotation we have on the now and also here we can apply is the is and the ping pong looping expression finally we create an offset of couple of frames always to make it look like the movement of the body is anticipated by the movement of the eyes once we finish with the head we can move on to the tentacles we are essentially going to repeat the same process we followed on the head let's select the null that controls the tentacles and also here we can set up a movement from left to right on the x axis after we set up the same movement on rotation Once finished, we create an overlap of some frames between the movements we made on the head and the movements we just created for the tentacles. Let's add turbulent displays to give a more organic touch to our design. Before moving on with the export, before moving on with the export. Let's remember to bring the time resolution of all the layers in which we have time displacement to 30000 the highest value allowed As I anticipated this will take a lot of power meaning even if the loop is just kept only last a couple of seconds you will need a lot of time to render And our tutorial is done As usual I invite you to post it on Instagram tagging me and using the art by mishram hashtag see you in the next tutorial thank you